Pedro from e and Reacts. I'm here today with Yarno of Shape of Despair to talk about Return to the Void out February 25th on Season of Mist. How are you doing today? Pretty fine, pretty fine. Enjoying one beer here and uh, talking to you. Well, just after working day, so this is good relaxment. <laughs> talking, about, you? You know, talking about music, talking about your record. I'm sure this is a nice way to unwind after a, a busy day, a busy day at work. So yeah. let's get to it. What is the starting point for you when it comes to creating a Shape of Despair record, specifically this one? Where, where did it all start? Uh, well, that is always a long, long kind of um, determination about what kind of album you're about to make. And it's a very long process, uh, at least for me. I'm not making um, these kind of songs just right out of that. Um, when I first started making these songs uh, right after Monotony Fields album uh, in 2015, um, it took a very long time to compose all of the songs to the point as, as they are right now. Um, but yeah, there's a uh, lots of processes to be going on and then again when we are thinking about how the songs are evolving that's um, very hard to answer because it's always moving to one point and then to another and you may come back after all to that same same song if it's not finished and yeah it's, it's a long process does each record give you a chance to uh, work creatively different depending on, on, on what you're getting, the mood that you're getting out of the songs and of how the album starts to shape up? Or, or do you have a process that this is pretty much how you approach every single record? Um, it's pretty clear. Uh, after all, when, for example, when I made the first song, which I believe that will come to the full, full length album, it's quite clear what kind of sound and what kind of um, full uh, album, uh, how do you say this? Um, uh, the whole package would look like, for example. It's very clear after the first song. What is the most challenging aspect for you to create a Shape of Despair record? Uh, I think it's the long process that's the most hardest of them all. When you're making some music of this, so, uh, everyone's not the same. For example, I'm, there's a lots of doom metal bands who are making music uh, very uh, rapidly, very often. But for me, for example, this is uh, that kind of thing that you are fully concentrating on the whole song and whole atmosphere and it's very hard for me to um, accomplishment of uh, the material to a small hole. I think that's that's very hard for me and uh, sometimes it's it's a bit more easier but I think the whole process is that that too long. Is it draining? Is, is it a draining yeah, process? Yeah, it is. It is. It is uh, because when you're training some um, inspiration from whatever negative feelings you are having, um, then you are um, composing those things to the songs, and you're uh, thinking of the songs all the time, all the riffs. You're just circling them in your head, and I think it's not not that healthy. Also, <laughs> I was going to say, I, I think you you start to lose yourself within that darkness. And, yeah. and perhaps it makes it a little yeah. bit harder for you to separate the creative darkness from then your real life uh, darkness. Mm -hmm. You can say that, yeah. Now, what goal do you have in mind when you build an album like this? Because you have six songs here that are so well interconnected with one another that it almost gives you a feel like you're listening to just one single track that has ebbs and flows. Uh, is that your goal from the beginning or, or does that kind of become a little bit more organic as you start to work on every single song? Oh, well, actually, the song orders, for example, came out pretty clear and the whole process in that way was quite easy to 
finish because um, all of the songs I made for this album were starting from the same way as they are in the album. So it's like a continuum which I made for uh, all the songs. And I guess, well, someone may hear some kind of um, continuity with these songs also. And I think it's very natural also. Well, one thing we can- but there was, But there wasn't any, any that kind of goals um, that I'm thinking way too much about what kind of um, song order there should be and uh, what are the lengths of the songs now. No, it's just all natural. It was more in your subconscious mind. Maybe you weren't, you know, physically thinking about it, but the way you put them together, the way you create them, they kind of came out that way. Yeah, yeah, it might be, it might be a concert work. Yeah. When you, when you have an album like this, and when you look at the genre of funeral doom, it, there is always easy to tell the similarities from song to song. And when I was listening to this record, it's really easy at first glance when you first listen to the album to detect the things that the songs have in common. It becomes a little bit harder to detect the things that the songs don't have in common. What do you feel separates each and every single track on this album? Mm, I wouldn't say that there won't need that much to be separate from each other. That's the first point. Um, it all sounds just like us, of course each and every track. But of course, they are holding some different thing, thing, different kind of elements inside the whole songs. It's not like uh, when you're hearing the first song, it's sounding the exact same as the uh, last one, for example. No, there's a different elements um, in atmosphere wise. Even someone may think that there might be <laughs> no changing in that one. <laughs> Uh, one of the phenomenal things about this record is the sound. I, I really love the sound. And the first aspect of the sound that I want to ask you about is that it didn't feel to me like the record had borders. The sound just kind of traveled, almost like if you were screaming at, at the finished nature. Like if you're in this tundra and you're screaming and your voice just travels through the open space, the record kind of had this, this feeling of just continuous traveling and expanding. Uh, how did you create that? That not just that atmosphere, but that sound experience. Mm, well, that, that came first in mind uh, when composing these songs. It started from the first song itself. It was very clear what kind of sounds I want to have. Um, first of all, um, we wanted this um, typical black metal kind of style um, sounds, but of course mixing with uh, very doomish sounds. So it was very clear. The songs were very easy, for example, when you started writing that first song and well, maybe I went too far with my demo recordings because they were over the top games <laughs> and everything, but it turned out very nice and um, I think when our drummer started to work on these songs mixing wise, there was so many information that he got from us that it, it was so easy to, to put it all together. Plus, of course, uh, some of it way much more. Mm. But I'm just thinking about the counterwise thing. For example, if we would have made this with someone totally different person than us, it would be so much harder to work on with. Mm -hmm. And I think the sounds would, may have not been the same. Did you did you feel like this album offers something different guitar wise? Because the guitar sound was also really in interesting. It had a very unique tone. It had a very unique delivery, and it had a very unique impact in how you perceive the whole record. So, did you guys change something specifically? Mm, well, as I, start, as I said before, um, yeah, there was a different kind of sound wise. If we are thinking about guitars itself, yeah, there was two different kind of sounds mainly. And for example, in monotony fields, we basically thought about as heavy as we could think of to our sound. But then again, on this album, it was very clear that we could try out some different things. And it was very nice also to try out these kind of things. Spreading and it's your, not your all... Wings. Sorry? Spreading your creative wings. <laughs> well... <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but now nah, it's um, 
it's nice nice to try out some things, but um, not to go too much far with it. Well, of course, it's always about the sound itself. What kind of music you are making? Um, you just have to try out some things. You, I think it's not like, a, for example, when you're making a Doom records, everyone thinks that let's take this Mesa Boogie or let's take this whatever PV and put them together or just make some Mesa Boogie sounds. No, I think it's not, not that wise. You have to try out some things. And of course you have to have some kind of imagination about what kind of your music will sound because if you're making those sounds. So moving from the sound to the vocals, and get ready because there's a quite a few puns coming next. Uh, Natalie and Henry, are they the shape and the void vocally? Uh, can you repeat that? It, it, Natalie and Henry, when you look at their two different vocal styles, are, are, is one the shape and the other one the void? Well, <laughs> If you think it that way, we can think of it that way. <laughs> it's, nice. I think it's an interesting way of thinking. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but it can be another way around too. Yeah, but then true. again, no. Nah. It's hard to say. It's <laughs> I guess everyone imagines things like like they want to, and this is just what we are making. This uh well, no, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say. Having, having two vocalists like that, does that give you so much more freedom to be creative musically because you know they, they're going to be able to give life to the creation that you're putting together? Yeah, yes, it does. Yeah, it's, um, well, honestly, the first thing what I was thinking when I made these songs, I never imagined what kind of arrangements Natalie is going to make here. And I was thinking first that uh, how female vocals will fit on this one. And I was very amazed what kind of work Henry and Natalie worked together about this whole album in singing wise. So yeah, definitely. There's uh, lots of things to keep from all the vocalists. When I was listening to this album and I was going song by song and I'm looking at the title of the track, you were able to capture the essence of the song with the title of the song. I mean, if you want to know what the track is going to feel like, you just have to look at the name of the song and that name of the song tells you exactly what the song is going to feel like. Uh, was that on purpose? Do you want to create that correlation between the title of the tracks and the emotion that it's represented within the songs themselves? Well, actually, Henry has all the keys on, on his hands on this one. I didn't make any kind of suggestions about anything about this track titles or lyrics or whatever. Um, that was a very good thing to do because, for example, I made all the lyrics uh, for the first three albums and then Henry started making uh, lyrics on Monotony Fields and this Return to the Void. And I think, well, I don't have perfect English also and it was <laughs> much more easier that Henry took them over. And of course, he's a very talented uh, writer and singer, of course, and I really appreciate what, um, what kind of arrangement he's doing. But then again, no, I didn't have anything to do with that. And Henry would have it been quite good to say some words about this uh, question. Well, he takes all the credit. He takes all the credit for being really intelligent and putting things together that way. And yeah. uh, and speaking of songs on the record, I have to ask you about the inner uh, desolation, the the closing track on the album, a very different song sound wise from everything else that you've given us up to that point. That track has some elements that separated uh, slightly, which makes it a very cool, a very good closing track. W what drove th those differences into that last song? W what originated those differences? I think it must be time itself. Um, as I said, it was a very long process to make these songs and every song came out as they came and in order also. So we are speaking about, let's say, in, within five years of time, all these uh, songs came together. So yeah, there's a time and place 
feelings, everything is uh, a bit different from the first song until the last song. But somehow, even they are with different songs, I think uh, this, this is a perfect closer to the, to the album. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree 100%. I think it's a perfect track to close off the album. Uh, it has all the elements that you want on a song that closes off uh, a record, any record, but specifically a record like this. And and considering five years that it took you, I think it's phenomenal that you're able to keep the songs as close together as they are. Because it's no, not yeah. like they sound like they were made throughout that period of time. Yeah. And I just said five years. I, I just can't remember. Was it two years or three years or four years? <laughs> <laughs> let's go yeah. with five. Let's let's just go with five. <laughs> if we go with five, it sounds even more epic. So let's just go with <laughs> <laughs> it, makes it, sound, it makes it sound bigger more 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 uh more epic so i think that's what we should just just go with five don't, don't even question yourself now during those five years was any of these songs uh more one more difficult than the other was there one that you were a little bit more stuck on for a longer period of time it must be solitary downfall was was the one even it sounds a bit more simple than the rest of the songs in the album. But then again, I'm always stuck, for example, when I'm making some songs and when I have that kind of riff, which I think it's a damn good one, it's always hard to think the continuity of that song. For example, if you're not um, making the song from the start till finish right away, and you put it back to closet, closet in your mind or something, and you come back after all, maybe half a year later, for example, and take it all out again. It's very hard to get back to that same atmosphere and the feeling which you first started to making that song. And I think with that song, sorry that down for it was the case. Yeah. One last question for you, and perhaps the biggest pun of, of them all. What shapes your despair? Sorry? What, what, shapes, what, what shapes your despair? You mean the band's title, band name? Yeah, but what shapes your own personal despair? So it's like a play on words from the, from the name of the band. So we all have our own things that drive despair within our lives. So what shapes yours? I would say human. It's all about what it's, what it's all about. It's the man itself. Good. I, I, I think you're not alone in, 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 that, in that despair, in that, oh. in that despair that, <laughs> that hits you, that impacts us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I feel the same sort of despair as, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we're definitely connected across those lines. So on, on that note, Yarno, thank you very much for your time today. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you about the record. Uh, you guys put together a very strong album. Thank you for the record. Thank you for the time. All the best to you and the rest of the, of the gang. And maybe one of these days, I'll see you guys in Finland at a show. You never know. Well, hope you visit. You're all welcome. Thanks well, for the interview, Petro. Kitos. Cheers. <laughs> Take care.